I don't have a mic. Um, not on me. As Andy said, I've spent the uh, last nine years working on this website, 4chan. Uh, as you can tell, it is a site about cats and the font Times New Roman. Um, and it's been a really interesting journey. Um, I've learned a lot about, I think, people and also a lot about myself. And so I'd like to share a little bit about that with you. Um, so anonymity and ephemerality are two things that really define 4chan. And kind of coincidentally, they were two things that almost weren't. Um, you know, so on the site, you don't have to have a, a user account to participate. And all of the content kind of rolls off the site within you know, minutes to hours to days. And be, when I founded the site, I was coming from another community that required, you know, had an archive and required registration. And so in my 15-year-old you know, wisdom, I actually almost um, had trip code registration and a, a permanent archive of all the posts on 4chan. And so um, I think the lesson I learned is that like, by being kind of slow and lazy, I kind of in, like, unwittingly uh, left these two things out that kind of made the site what it is today. Um, I learned a lot about uh, kind of communities and, and kind of barriers. Um, every community wants to self-regulate, right? Uh, and Fortran is a community that's lacking in structural barriers in that, again, there's no registration, there's no uh, fee that you have to pay to be a member of the community. Um, and yet there are these really kind of, you know, really high kind of sociocultural barriers that the community has erected to keep people out, right? I mean, you know, as Andy kind of said, V has this notorious reputation. You know, why is that? Uh, it's because they don't want you all using it, essentially. Um, you know, they use, um, you know, imagery, you know, kind of offensive imagery, offensive language, um, kind of cryptic language to, um, you know, create a place where, again, albeit it's open and, and kind of accessible to anybody, uh, you have to be kind of of a certain, kind of a cut of a certain jib and you know, willing to kind of, you know, sift through all of this, um, you know, kind of, you know, kind of garbage and search, kind of like search for that diamond in the rough. Um, and although, like, again, technically my mother could use the site, I mean, she can't, right? Because she wouldn't be able to kind of parse and grok the language that they use. And probably within two minutes she'd be offended and, you know, shut the computer never to, uh, never to return. Um, you know, 4chan now is nine years old, and it's about 22 million people will visit it in a given month. And, you know, this is what that looks like, right? Um, this is the past four and a half years of traffic since we've been keeping logs, but, you know, 4chan has never had this kind of explosive, you know, growth that it seems everybody these days is trying to kind of engineer. You know, everybody kind of, I think, fantasizes and fetishizes this idea of, you know, having a hit and having something get really, you know, really big really quickly and being you know, having that kind of hockey stick. If we think about like the number of sites that have hockey stick in the past, you know, in, in just those four and a half years that I showed you where 4chan's graph kind of looks just like that. Uh, this is chat roulette, we kind of all know it happened there. Um, so it's kind of like, be careful what you wish for. Um, you know, one thing that I've never really paid much attention to too is, um, you know, metrics. Like that graph, uh, it's probably the first time I've looked at you know, trailing four years or, or even like monthly traffic for 4chan in a really long time, right? Um, you know, traffic has never been something that's been really important to me. I think I've always thought about it as something that just comes naturally if people like your thing. And I think as it turns out, that's been the case. Um, and I think that like, I mean, you know, from my experience with Canvas now where, you know, doing a venture back startup, there's a lot of pressure to kind of look at everything, right, record everything. Uh, and there's this kind of concept of data-driven development. That's like the new black that's really sexy right now. Facebook does it, so so should you. And there's this kind of, you know, this pressure to, to you know, AB every little change that uh, you, you might make and to look at the results and to make decisions that way. And so uh, I had a friend refer to that as kind of like, you know, I think probably most of you are familiar with the concept of design by committee. This is kind of like design by spreadsheet where Microsoft Excel is like charting your product's path. Um, and so instead, I've kind of like always liked the idea of kind of qualitative holistic metrics in the case of Canvas. Um, <laughs> so you, thank you for proving my point. So like my really important metric for Canvas was always will I laugh, right? Like can I visit Canvas on a daily basis and see something above the fold that will make me smile or make me laugh? And if that's not the case, like we're failing. Um, you know, I don't need a graph you know, a, a, like a plot chart or, you know, a pie chart to tell me that if I don't smile or laugh, you know, we're failing. Uh, 4chan has kind of a warped metric uh, in this sense. 4chan is more like, have I gone to jail yet? 
Um, this is actually a uh, transcript from testimony uh, that I had to give in court uh, in the US v. David Kernel case, where this gentleman uh, hacked Sarah Palin's email account, and they you know, put him on trial. And this was kind of like a very surreal experience for me, because I was in court you know, describing what a B-tard was in front of a jury, uh, and a troll, and Rickroll. Um, I, didn't, I don't have the cross-examination, but it was like equally kind of, this was the prosecution. Uh, the cross was equally kind of weird and hilarious. Um, and so if you don't track metrics, right, if you're kind of oblivious and, and blind and whatnot to what your Google, Ana Google Analytics are telling you, um, you know, how do you know when you've succeeded? Um, I think like having your own kind of I mean, goal obviously is, is, is a good thing, right? And so Andy and I have actually talked about this in the past, and uh, in, in, our, in my case, you know, in the case of both Fortune and Canvas that are communities, it's kind of this question of, well, when have you made it? Like, when are you a community? And Andy has, has shared with me that his kind of own personal definition is when users will self-organize and do meetups on their own. Uh, you know, like, when do you get to that critical mass where your users are just kind of like, F y'all, we're gonna get together and do our own little, you know, user meetup without, without you having to plan it for us. And that, I think is really encouraging to see, right? Um, you know, my own personal definition has been, actually Tim O'Reilly uh, you know, has, a, has a quote where he said, with you know, O'Reilly Media, that kind of their goal is to create more value than they capture. And I think a true community creates more value than it captures. And kind of in my own corner of the web, this has been kind of interesting just in the past four years where we've seen this huge kind of uptick in the number of kind of aggregator websites, right? Like Cheeseburger, 9gag, uh, you know, Funny Junk, E-bombs world that kind of take content from 4chan and other communities, you know, user-generated content, and kind of package it, and you know, kind of, as I as I've said, kind of you know, take UGC, uh, you know, put Facebook comments on it and wrap it in ads. And they believe that that well, there's Facebook comments, right? People are commenting. That's a community, right? Uh, and I would say that fails that test, right? Because I think, and I've said this to Ben in the past, who's the CEO of Cheeseburgers, that. It feels to me like that, that's a business, right? That is a business that is built upon extracting value from things that people have created kind of elsewhere. And I don't think that they return as much value to kind of the ecosystem as they extract from it. And so I would say that kind of fails that test. Um, I've also believed in this kind of um, hands-off approach to moderation. So 4chan is not, um, this is a visible hand, by the way. Not quite invisible, but. I, um, you can pretend. The moderation on 4chan has always been very uh, hands-off, uh, to put it lightly. Um, <laughs> and I, I, and I, I think that's a good thing, right? I mean, I kind of believe for the internet and, and communities, this kind of, you know, John Locke, invisible kind of guiding force that will, you know, allow the users to kind of make their own path and find their way. I mean, add enough kind of structure and boundaries there that they don't do anything horrible, or hope that they don't, and kind of corral them when they do, but more or less, um, you know, let them kind of use your product, you know, make the thing, you know, what it is. Uh, and in that sense, I think that I deserve really, like, little credit for doing things right and more credit for not doing things wrong. Um, you know, by kind of, like, not messing up, like, that has been my, my strong point, not fucking up. Um, and in fact, like, we found this with Canvas, too. Uh, the, the most, like, coolest part about Canvas is a feature that we did not expect would be that popular. Um, you know, Canvas is, as Andy said, like kind of like a, you know, more tame remixing cousin of 4chan, and so it's all like work safe. And the you know the kind of the core piece of the site is this remixer where users can kind of do inline image editing and take an image that's been posted and you know, change it in some way, you know, with a paintbrush or add text to it, um, and then you know spit it out for the community to see. And it kind of just you know this kind of back and forth, this riffing back and forth. And we viewed inline image editing as kind of an obvious feature, right? If we were doing a visual kind of community website, yeah, that, that's great. Like, let's throw in inline image editing because it's just an obvious feature to have. But we had no idea that the community would embrace it the way that they have. And again, I think we allowed them to kind of teach us something about our own product. Um, I think at this point I view features as bugs. Um, you know, kind of in that vein, I've, I've learned the importance of letting go. Um, you know, a lot of people, for whatever reason, kind of think of me as uh, somebody who has a lot of power on the internet, because you know, B is the, is the home to millions and millions of crazy people who uh, 
I'm sure you're familiar with some of their exploits, but you know, they yeah they do things, and uh, you know, me being the administrator, like oh I must have some sort of control over these people, like couldn't be further from the truth, right? Um, and so the way I've kind of reconciled this for myself is, um, you know, like I kind of might might be at the wheel, but I don't control the wind. You know, I'm I'm Mr. Captain Awesome Skeleton there at my computer, but at the end of the day, like for as much input as I have over the community. Um, you know, like, you know, nature kind of will do as it pleases and the community will kind of do as it pleases and as much as I throw that wheel left or right, you know, I can't make the wind blow. And so I think it's important to kind of understand your context within a community in that sense and, um, you know, like you are not uh, mother nature, no matter kind of how hard you try. And this is kind of one example of that. Uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with this, but they basically sent me to this really fancy party where there was this online poll, and uh, you know, Barack Obama was on it, the Twitter guys were on it, somehow I was on it, and the community caught wind of this and decided that, for whatever reason, they wanted to see me in a suit, I guess, and kind of basically sent me to this party by just completely like vote bombing it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had like 16 million votes. Actually, I think time took away like 10 million of my votes, but I still won. And, I think that, like, the irony to that, though, is that if I had, first of all, I didn't even know about it until I think a day or two later where I just checked my inbox and a bunch of 4chaners had emailed me to say, hey, look, we're doing this thing. Are you, are you okay with that? And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, but, but if I had asked these people to do this for me and said, hey, I'm on this poll. Please make me number one. They would have been like, screw him. Make sure he's the last place. <laughs> they would have found a way to give me like negative votes on this poll uh, <laughs> just in spite of me. And so, moral of the story, don't mess with Mother Nature and don't let 4 chaners get anywhere near online polls. <laughs> Beat a dead horse. No picture for this. Um, every single mistake I think I've probably ever made in life has to come uh, from communication. And really, probably most of my larger mistakes with 4chan, I mean, I've been lucky to not totally screw up to the point where people have Know, left the site en masse, but I've definitely messed up a lot. And I think most of those mistakes have come from lack of communicating. Um, you know, most recently, just in the past two years, when I went off to start Canvas, actually that was a complete, so I just wrote my first news post on 4chan last month, and I had not updated the news in four years, which is horrible, right? Like completely unacceptable. You know, I've got 100 million people will visit the site in a year, and I let it go four years without saying anything to them. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> um, and, it, it, and that was ridiculous, right? And so one of the things that happened in that period of time is I dropped out of school and I started this new company, Canvas, and they hated me for it because I think it's kind of like finding out your parents are getting separated by like the annoying kid at the lunch table that you just happen to sit next to. Um, and so th instead of learning about me kind of moving on and wanting to pursue a new project from me, they learned about it from like TechCrunch, which is the worst way. Again, that's like even worse than annoying kid at the lunch table. That's terrible. TechCrunch should never be telling your community what's happening with your life or with the community. Um, and so they were really kind of, I think, freaked out. They thought that I was leaving the site and going to shut it down or didn't love them anymore. Um, none of that is obviously true. I've been using 4chan every day for the past nine years. Um, I know I look it like I've seen some shit. Uh, <laughs> But unless you communicate that, then, I mean, they don't know. Bus factor. I think all the engineers here will know what bus factor is. But one of the other, I think, larger mistakes I've made is to, oh, and here's my bus. I live in New York, so that, that is the bus. Um, I never brought on partners for either of my projects, and it's something that to this day I regret. I think having a great team, I mean, really franchising people and making them feel like they're a part of something and you know, leaning on them and relying on them and, and you know, have building this kind of core team um, that you know, does this thing with you is, is critical, right? I mean, for your own sanity uh, and also for like, the longevity of the site. I mean, at this point, like, this isn't actually a joke because if I got hit by a bus, I have no idea what would happen to 4chan. In fact, they ask me this frequently now. I've started doing these Q&A threads on the site and every time we do one of these threads, somebody asks, like, who is your successor? Uh, you know, what happens if you get hit by a bus? And my response is, mama pool? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I hope you guys like my mom, because she's going to be running things around here once I uh, 
get hit by a bus. Um, so yeah, I, I think I've learned that the hard way. Uh, it, you know, it's obviously like not always the case that you can start something with somebody, but I think early on, I mean, there are always going to be people who really support you and love your thing, and I think it's really important to identify those people as quickly as possible and, I mean, make them your partners. In the case of 4chan, a little bit trickier, being that they're all anonymous and crazy, but <laughs> I've definitely, you know, met a lot of really great people through it uh, and have a lot of great people who help out right now. Um, this is something I think kind of the, the biggest lesson that I've learned in the past few years has been that there's kind of beauty and imperfection. Uh, you know, going back to that first slide of what 4chan looks like, clearly not a perfect website, right? Like we break every modern design principle and then some. Um, and so I gave this kind of ridiculous talk two years ago where somebody gave me the topic of media streams and they said, give me a talk about media streams. And I was like, what the hell? Is, okay. And I came up with this. I, I think it's kind of decent. Um, you know, take a stream, for example. So a stream is something where you know, it, it propels water in a direction, right? It has enough structure, uh, you know, it has these kind of jagged edges uh, that gets water from A to B, uh, but it's not perfect, right? It's kind of got this, you know, broken kind of a path. It's got rocks and sticks and flora and fauna and, and things that kind of break it up. I and mean, those two streams are alike. They're, you know, unique in the water. You know, every kind of water, you know, molecule flows through it a different way. Um, and then you've got something like this. This is the Los Angeles River. It's concrete. It's geometric. It's, it's a great way of getting water from A to B but it's lacking in all of this. And so I kind of think for, of 4chan more as that first example, right? And Facebook as something like this, where, I mean, Facebook is so structured, right? I mean, they tell you, I mean, it's perfectly designed in kind of like one sense of that, you know, of, in that concept, but, you know, they're kind of telling you what you can do, where you can do it, and what it has to say. And I think as a result, you've seen, I mean, Facebook's not a community, I mean, not in my opinion. Um, and if you think about kind of the culture that's coming out of 4chan versus the culture that's coming out of Facebook, I think that the closest thing to a meme that Facebook has is, I lost my cell phone, please give me your number. So, and to kind of put that another way, I think, you know, in terms of like kind of capturing energy and imperfection, um, you know, IMAX, for example, is, is probably technically the best way to experience a film, right? It's like great picture if you're, unless you're going to one of the fake IMAXs, in which case it's like just, like up badged regular movie. But if you go to like the six story kind, right? It's a huge picture, uh, great sound, but you know, kind of like a really uniform and solitary experience, right? Like all of these people are kind of glued to the picture, which is the point. Um, but I would kind of argue that this is a more, a better way of kind of experiencing a film, right? Like a drive in movie theater is like not a good way to experience a film in one sense, in that, you know, the picture is probably kind of washed out and crappy. The sound isn't that good. I mean, the sound's like in a box next to you instead of coming from in front of you. You know, people are like eating and making out and honking and talking, and it's, it's terrible, right? And yet this, I, I mean, I, 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 if, you, if I asked you to all like recall anything from a movie recently, you probably wouldn't be able to name anything. But if you've ever been to a drive-in movie theater, you probably, you know, really remember that experience because it's completely different, it's unique, it's memorable. And that imperfection is what, I think creates, um, you know, again, memorable experiences, something actually like worth writing home about. Um, kind of going on what Matt said yesterday, uh, money is the least interesting problem. I don't even know how to, how to get more into this, but, uh, you know, 4chan for me has never been a money maker. In fact, I've been losing money now for almost a full year. Um, and people are surprised by that because they go, oh, well, it's 600 million page views and 20 million people and where's your helicopter? And it's hard for them to understand that that's not what can motivate somebody. I think you all obviously understand that, but your average person doesn't. Um, you know, I've always treated it more like a hobby than a, than a business and I think that's kind of kept me grounded over the years. And, you know, I think it's, yeah, it's interesting to build a billion dollars in shareholder value and sell a company in two years, uh, but it's more interesting to build a company and to run it for 10 years. I mean, in this room, we've got, um, you know, we've got Matt, obviously, with Metafilter. We've got Jason with Text Files, Andy with Waxy, Jason you know, with Kotke, uh, you know, Scott Peele with Laughing Squid. I mean, we've got all these people who have been doing what they love for a decade, and, I mean, I would take that over a billion dollars any day, and I mean that. Um, I mean, those are my heroes. And so, to kind of close, I mean, I think learning is the most interesting problem, right? And I've tried to kind of put myself in a position over these past four years now to 
meet as many interesting people as I can and to come to great events like this and, and meet you all and you know, listen to these talks and just to always kind of be learning. Um, and the past nine years have been up and down. I mean, I've definitely burnt out and felt horrible and been on the verge of bankruptcy. And, and you know, I mean, the lowest of the lows are very low. But you know, at the same time, I've had just the most wonderful nine years that I can imagine. I mean, I can't imagine my life any I mean, it's, I can't fathom it. I mean, I've spent a third of my entire life doing this at this point. Um, I met the most amazing people. And I mean, it's a privilege to be here in front of all of you and to have been you know, kind of entrusted by you know, all the people that use 4chan with giving them a home and you know, doing it all these years. So thank you.